Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, obviously, coming off a, a big win, uh, real proud of our team, the way they played. We played our most complete game uh, probably since I've been here. So, real proud of our guys. Now we got to flip the switch. Uh, you know, we're going to uh, Texas Tech, a uh, team uh, very similar to us as far as record wise. They won their last two. They have momentum to fight for uh, the ballpark just like we are. Your head coach. Uh, Joe McGuire is a guy that I know well, got a lot of respect for, a legendary Texas high school coach. Um, does a great job coaching. You can watch on film. They've got to play extremely hard. They're a physical football team. They're very good on special teams. Uh, and then defensively, they don't give up a lot of big plays that make you earn it. Offensively, they'll spread you out. They'll play fast. Uh, you've got to be good in space. They're running back. I mean, I will play in the, the uh, I guess, the second uh, running back as far as yards, uh, you know, in our conference. So back to back weeks, you know, we got to stop the running in, but they do a good job of trying to reach in space uh, also. So be a, a good test for us, question. How does a winning streak now, winning two in a row, especially a win like this, how does that just change things around the building, showing that the players, that their hard work is paying off? Yeah, you know, you see a lot more smiles, which is always great to see. Uh, you know, and I'll say this, I mean, like, we practiced last night, our guys had good positive energy, but even in those tough weeks, uh, we'd go out there. Our guys would, would find a way to flip the script, and go in and practice hard, and that was rare. So that, you know, that's really not unusual, but you do see you know, the, the smiles around the complex. It's always good to see those players uh, with that. Guys, RJ Harvey obviously has put together a pretty solid performance the last five weeks, yeah. five games. What stands out to you about how he's he's grown and into that role of being a running back, and what makes him kind of so special? That he's been able to do what he's been able to do. Yeah, well, well keep in mind, you know, he was a, a quarterback in high school. The quarterback at Virginia, and in the last two years, been learning to play the running back position. I think things are starting to slow down for him. Uh, he's very patient. Uh, his lateral quickness. There's a couple plays where they did some stunts. I had some defensive linemen in the backfield. He just went lateral. Ended up turning. You know, a, a possible negative play for just a regular running back in the 12, 13 yard game. I mean, he's he's got that ability, and then of course when he breaks, I mean, he's got real speed too. So uh, playing good without the ball too. So he's starting to establish himself as one of the better running backs in our league, probably in the country. You met, you mentioned throughout the year that, that you want to be a team that gets better as as the year goes on, playing your best football toward the end of the season. Obviously, there was the the lull in the middle, but what are you seeing that, that has helped this team? Yeah, yeah it took us a little bit. And, and I think, too, like, I mean, uh, real unfortunate about JRP getting hurt the second game of the year and everything that happened. And you can see, like, as he's getting healthier, it really changes the dynamics, really, not just our offense, but our whole team. And our whole team, uh, you know, they kept practicing through the tough times and got better uh, in practice and each week. Last two weeks, we found a way to do that. More talk now about the offensive line, particularly center. Each week, you're yeah. doing a different combination. Can you take us behind the scenes a little bit about what went into the decision to go with a real kind? Yeah, um, you know, Pula Bible, he's on one foot. Uh, you got Cincinnati's D line, which is really good. And this D line is really good, too. Um, and just, you know, we really just wanted to put, you know, five veteran guys out there. Guy, you know, Gives a couple snaps that were a little bit low, a little high. And JRP really handled it well, but you know, he's a veteran guy. He did a really good job. Uh, Aiden Kipper still will be in the mix this week. Uh, you know, he's starting to get closer to 100% whenever he got banged up. But uh, that's the fourth center that, that we've had this year. I, mean, I don't know at the time we ever got to the third center you know, with the first group. So this is a very unique year. I think it does say a lot about the depth that we have. I mean, there hasn't been a whole lot of continuity about starts with all five guys in the same position, and that's really hard. And then we were able to run the football as effectively as we have. I think that says a lot about our depth. But uh, there was some stress going in last week with Kai playing his first, you know, center against a real team. But he handled it like a champ, and our quarterback handled like a champ on the snaps. So. You know, we weren't perfect. And when the rain came in, you must have been a little nervous about 
have a, a new center in, in yeah, those conditions. Yeah, yeah, getting a dry ball in there too. You know, like uh, we threw a couple balls up. You know, one in the red zone, man. We had it, had it right there. And we get the ball dry. We got to do a better job of that next time. But yeah, that that did go through my mind. Not just that, but the the punter and our snapper and you know, all the things that went with that. Cause it was raining sideways there for a while. Uh, would you say that this past weekend's game was the uh, best game you ever saw JRP play in? Um, you know, it, it's right up there. If not, I mean, the deep balls. I mean, the thing about it, when you throw the football, it's more from the waist down than the arm. And like, his knee has still been recovering. And last week in practice, he threw the best deep balls that he's had so many. And it carried over the game. He was throwing dimes out there with deep balls. And four guys would even make their cut. So it's really carried over. He's getting more healthier. Uh, and, you know, the one, the protection, that protection was really poor on the one that came out. You know, like him to take a sack. He's trying to make a play, but the protection was so poor, it was really tough for him, for him to even, you know, comprehend exactly what was happening. Things happen quick, but, you know, when he's making plays with his feet, it opens up everything else for our offense. Gary mentioned uh, cross training some of the offensive linemen last night during the fall camp. So what went into the process, especially when you see guys like Rokahi switch positions and Marcellus Marshall played started games in three different positions now. So what was kind of that work uh, before the season started to get to this point? Yeah, ideally, you want to keep guys in the same position. And they get used to working together and communicating together. This year, because of injuries, we've not been able to do that. More than any other time, really, that I've been a college coach. But it kind of goes back to you know, we have seven to eight guys that we felt real good about going the year. That's probably the most quality that we've had. And thank goodness we, we do have that. But I'm not going to you know, lie to you like the stress of, of having multiple guys and multiple you know, moving parts right there. That's a stressful deal. Uh, but our guys have hand, handled it pretty well. Gus, what do you know about Texas Tech's environment there in Lubbock? And also, what has your team learned from prior road tests this season that can help you guys out? Yeah, I mean, we, we, it's, it's hard to win on the road. I think I think um, you can look at, at look at our league. Um, you know, I've never been there other than driving through there, uh, familiar with the old Southwest Conference back in the day. You know, when I was growing up, and you know, they had a lot of tradition all that. And I know it's windy, um, it's flat out there. Probably a little cold in November too, but you know it's a great environment, and uh, we'll have to play really well to win. What can you say about this run defense? I mean, everyone knows that's been a struggle for most of the Big Twelve season, and we knew who was coming in, Ali Gordon, Oklahoma State, and just to, to completely shut them down for the most part. Just talk about the effort you saw from your guys. Yeah, I'm real proud of our with our guys, our run fits right there. You know, we, we talked about our defensive line playing in the other team's backfield, being a little more aggressive and not doing as much reading, but be a little more aggressive. And that's really what started out in the first quarter that helped our fits, helped our linebackers, our defensive line, did a better job of keeping uh, off the linebackers. And then when they did single block, they came off and, and made plays. And then our safeties, you know, they fit. Um, and one of our safeties caught the fumble. Another one, you know, made a really good tackle right there, um, you know, in, in the hole. So, you know, it's just kind of growing as a defense. Uh, played our best game uh, against the hottest, probably the hottest offense in college football last week. We got to continue that and carry that over this week because we got another real running back that we got hands full with too. Gus, I imagine during a losing streak, people can start to hang their heads. But what does it do for morale to be the top 15 team at home, and how can you carry that momentum moving forward? Yeah, it's a big shot in the arm. Uh, there, there's no doubt. You know, we it was a it was a good quality win for us the week before on the road. That got us that good feeling back, and then obviously to be in front of your home fans, you know the space game and everything that goes with that. A top 15 team in the country, the hottest team in the country coming in, and for us not only to win but to win convincingly, you know that really helps everything. And you know our guys, you know they they played their best game, and this is the time of year that you need to keep continuing to improve and play your best football. A lot of programs can lose momentum this time of year. But our guys, it's a credit to them, it's a credit to our coaches that they kept battling and uh, you know, played their, their best game at home in, in front of the home crowd. 
Uh, what was your reaction to seeing the fans storm the field after the game? Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. I mean, it was really cool. You know, I know for our players, they really, they really thought it was really neat. You know, anytime that means you're going to a really big game when that happens. And uh, our fans, you know, we've had some tough goes. We had to give them a lot to cheer about you know, at home. So that was really good just from a personal experience to see them be able to experience some, some positive things too. Just on the injury front, you mentioned Bula. Obviously, he was yeah. in the boot before the game. Is he available this week? And and, or, and do you have any plans maybe to continue to maybe push Lakai at that center position? Yeah, we'll, we'll see how this week goes. Okay. Uh, Bula, I'm not for sure if he's going to be back or not. Uh, he didn't practice last night, so so we'll see. Um, we'll see how the week goes. I'll give you an update you know, later on. Good. I'm sorry, Ricky Barber. I was going to ask. Yeah, about Ricky that. Barber. Hopeful. You know, okay. he wasn't able to play last week. Um, you know, we're hopeful, uh, but I was so proud of our guys that did play, you know, last week. And we'll see, you know, his status later in the week, too. What has Lee Hunter meant to the defensive line this year? And you talked about what a big improvement he made during the offseason. Obviously, he's coming off a really big game. Yeah, you know, the thing about Lee is, you know, he's played a lot of snaps this year. And he had not been 100% at times, but he has battled through. He really controlled a lot of scrimmage last week. And uh, any time he's single block, you know, that's really hard. Uh, he comes off and makes plays. And he's really turned himself into one of our leaders, not just a leader. He can be starting to turn into a team leader. And he's the type of guy when he talks, everyone listens. And he's earned that. And uh, I really think the sky's the limit for big league. You talked about the momentum that comes with this win Saturday, two-game winning streak. But how do you and coaches make sure there's not a letdown that comes after it? Yeah, yeah, you know, it, it, we, we're fighting for a, a chance for a bowl. We're playing a team that's just like us. I mean, that, that, that's great. It, it's, it's in the past. We'll, we'll think about it in the, you know, in the uh, all season. But, you know, we, we've got our hands full. This is a really big game coming up. Uh, there won't be any kind of let down as far as mental, especially with everything we went through, uh, you know, this season. What's your connection with Joey McGuire? I know he came up through high schools yeah. in Texas. How, how do you know him? Yeah, so Joey, when I first got in college, I guess it was Tulsa. I started recruiting the school. We got some of his players. And, you know, Todd Graham, our old, my old head coach, was a Texas high school coach, Allen. He was really close to him. My stepmom uh, was a science teacher uh, at Joey's school, too, in eighth grade. I recruited his quarterback with Arkansas State before I went to Auburn. So I know him well, and I've always been a big fan of his. You know, little high school coaches that are kind of kind of stick together, you know, and he's a real football coach. I mean, you want to like, he's in the Hall of Fame, you know, in Texas. And, you know, my goal when I was in Arkansas, you know, my goal was to be a head coach in Texas. I mean, that was, if I'd ever been able to do that, you know, I'd have, I'd have made it back in the day. And so I always had a lot of respect for him. You know, I think he won three state championships in Texas. I mean, they, they've got to win like 16 games to, you know, to win a state championship in high school. Really, really hard to do. So I've always been a fan of Joey's. You mentioned that the defense was, you know, camped up for the challenge of playing the number one running back in the country. Yeah. Does it help in a sense to then immediately get the number five running back in the country right after that? As far as that, that might be. I don't know. I don't know. We got to, you know, that's he's a real back. I mean, whether give it to him pretty sometime, I mean, like he's a really good back. Uh, it's another big challenge for our defense. You know, it's a week to week in college football. You go to the next week and you have a new challenge for it. But, uh, you know, the, that would be a big key, you know, trying to control it. Uh, Texas State, the other side of the ball on defense. I know they held Kansas. I know Kansas was down their third string QB. But what did they do defensively, Texas Tech? They, what they attacked them is what they did. And, and you know, we, we had a tough go at Kansas. You know, they both raced us now. So we know how hard that is. It doesn't matter if they're on there. Four string quarterback. I mean, Kansas has a great offense team. They got a great running back too. They got good offensive line for them to hold them to that many points. That gets your attention. Uh, and then for them to get that win at that place, Kansas also was one of the hottest teams, you know, in, in our league and probably in the country. And they went there and won. So that will definitely get your attention. Yes, one, I'm going to go back to RJ Harvey. Personality-wise, you know, he's he's kind of a soft-spoken guy. What what kind of has he has, have you seen him maybe kind of grow in that personality-wise and leadership role as, as well? Yeah, he'll actually you know have a conversation. You know, using his little smile back and back. Hey, come on, you know. And he's starting also to kind of come out of his shell, and you know, he's also one of those guys when he speaks, everybody listens. 
lot of respect for him, but he is a super young man with a super heart, um, and he's starting to gain confidence and uh, been real proud of him. There's kind of been a controversy the last few weeks about sign stealing in college yeah. football. There's talk of, you know, maybe this is going to spur changes to have, you know, headset or helmet communication yeah. with quarterbacks, maybe wristbands. Kind of what's your stance on that? Would that make your job a lot easier, not having to worry about changing things up week to week and other teams I mean, stealing I'd, signs? I'd be okay with headsets. You know, the, the sign stealing, I mean, that, that, that's been going on forever as far as looking over and trying to figure out what their signals are. You look on TV and everybody does it and they try to gain an advantage, you know. That's been since 2006. You know, but when, you, when you're videoing, that's a different story now. I mean, that, that's, that's a completely different deal. You know, so I think that's where it's got to be separated. I'm a no huddle guy, and you know, when I first got college football, I'm gonna look over the sidelines. I can tell that's cover three. Guess what? I'm gonna call cover three play. That's coaching. That's football. And, and really, that's you know, back in the day when we were one of the only no huddle, not the first or whatever. Man, that, that, that was steel. Like it was easy. And then everybody started going no huddle, and you know, we played. Uh, I guess Chip Kelly in the national championship game. We had our numbers and boy, you had all those fancy signs and all that. So that's when everything kind of accelerated after that. But that still goes on in college football. That's part of the game now, whether coaches like it or not. Video, that's a different story. As much talk as there's been about the defense stopping the run, there's also the turnovers. You won the turnover battle. Just talk about the opportunistic yeah, four, 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 four turnovers. I mean, they were all down there you know, on, our, on our side of the field. It was huge. Uh, our guys, you know, we had, uh, had a couple of tip balls. Our corners broke on balls. Uh, the ball went in the air. It caused the one fumble. Um, you know, I thought that was really good. You know, we, we liked that one back that we turned the ball over. Here's the great thing. I mean, we're on our 25 or 30 when we fumbled. The defense got it right back. We've been talking about our team about, man, let's pick each other up. If one side needs some help, you know, pick each other up, make sure that that we're more of a team, and our guys have done that the last couple of weeks. Good. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you.